Hi everyone, welcome to Engineered Math. In this video, I will teach you about Kirchhoff's Voltage and Current Law, Part 2. So, I already have a previous video about Kirchhoff's Voltage and Current Law, Part 1, wherein we just discussed the theory and concepts about KCL and KVL. So, we did not solve any sample problem in that video. So here in part 2, we will just apply KVL and KCL to solve a particular circuit. So if you haven't watched yet the first part of our KVL and KCL theories and concepts, I will just put the link of the video on the description so you can check it first because we're gonna use those concepts in our solution for our sample problems using KVL and KCL, okay? So, to illustrate how to use KCL and KVL to solve a circuit, we have this example. So, find the voltages across and currents through each of the resistors for this given circuit. So, we have three resistors in the circuit. Let's name the first one as R1 equal to 2 ohms. Let's name this 8 ohm resistor as R2 and this 4 ohm resistor as R3. And we also have here two independent voltage sources, the 5 volt DC source and the 3 volt DC source. So we are required to find the voltages across each of the resistors R1 to R3 as well as the currents flowing through them. So the first step in solving a circuit using KVL and KCL we will assign the direction of the currents through each resistor. So at first it doesn't matter whatever directions we assign because in the end part of our solutions if we notice that the values of the currents that we have solved is negative it just means that our assumed direction is opposite so let's arbitrarily assume the direction of each of the current flowing through the resistor so for r1 let's say i will assume this direction of current going to the right for r2 let's say i will assume upward direction of current and for R3 I will assume going to the right direction of current okay and then we will apply the passive sign convention as what we've discussed on my previous video so having assigned these directions of current using passive sign convention we can also assign the polarity of the resistor so we know using passive sign convention the currents for resistors always enter the positive polarity so for R2 Therefore, the polarity of voltages across R1 will be plus minus since this is the direction of our current that we assume. So the current is entering the positive polarity and leaving the negative polarity of R1. So for R2, assigning a polarity of voltage drop across it since this is the direction of our current, therefore this must be plus and minus. Okay, for R3, since this is the direction of current, the polarity of voltage trap must be plus and minus. Okay? So after that, we will assign also the direction for the loop. So we have two loops, right? So this loop and this loop. So it's up to us. So it can be clockwise or counterclockwise. But it's easier if we try to assume both direction for each loop. So if it's clockwise on the first loop, then it should be clockwise also on the other loop or the other way around. So let's say I will assume a clockwise direction for the current in these both loops. Okay? So let's name it as loop 1 and this as loop 2. Also, let's try to name the current for R1 as I1 the current for R2 as I2, and the current for R3 as I3. As well as the voltage drop across R1 is V1, across R2 is V2, and across R3 is V3. Okay, now we have assigned everything. Let's now create our equations. So we can start by creating KVL equation to every loop. So let's start with the first loop. So, if we sum up the voltage around loop 1, it is equal to 0. So, as what we've discussed on the previous video, our sign convention is that whatever is the polarity that this assigned direction of, of our current for the loop enters, then that will be the direction of the voltage. So, for 5 volt DC source, since the assigned current will enter the negative polarity, its value is negative 5 volts. Okay? While for R1, it enters the positive polarity 
So we have plus V1. And lastly, for R2, it enters the negative polarity so that we have minus V2. And then equate to 0. Then the next step is to convert the voltages V1 and V2 in terms of resistance and current using Ohm's law, right? So we know that using Ohm's law, voltage is equal to IR. So for V1, we assign the current as I1 and we have the value of resistance R1 equals 2 Ohm. So therefore, if we try to represent that V1 in terms of current and resistance, we have negative 5 plus V1 will be the resistance R1 is 2 Ohm, so 2 times I1, right? Minus for V2, we have 8 Ohm resistance for R2, so we have 8 times the current I2 equals 0. So we can transpose this negative 5 to the right, so we have 2 I1 minus 8 I2 equals positive 5. This is our equation 1. Next, let's create another KVL equation, this time for loop 2. So let me copy the circuit again. Okay, so if we sum up the voltage around the loop 2, it must be equal to 0. Okay, so let's start with the voltage drop across this R2, which is V2. So since the direction of our current for the loop is clockwise, it will enter the positive polarity of V2. So, so we have positive V2. Next, for V3, the voltage drop across R3, it will enter the positive polarity. So we have plus V3. And for this 3 volt DC source, it will enter the negative polarity. So we have negative 3 volts. And then equated to 0. So we can transpose this negative 3 to the right. So we have positive V2 plus V3 equals positive 3. And then again, we will convert these two voltages, V2 and V3, in terms of resistance and current. So using Ohm's law for V2, the resistance is 8 Ohm. So we have 8 times the current I2 plus for V3, the resistance is 4 ohms. So we have 4 times the current I3 equal to 3 volts. So this is now equation 2. So how many equations do we need to have? Since we have 3 unknown currents, right? I1, I2, and I3. So therefore, we must have 3 equations also to be able to solve for the 3 currents. So, since we already have two equations, we need another one equation to complete the three equations. So, where will we get that? This time, we will apply KCL. So, we can apply KCL at this node. Let's say node A. Okay? So, as what we've discussed, KCL means that if we sum up the currents entering a node, it should be equal to the sum of the currents leaving the same node. So, we have summation of current leaving equal summation of current entering. So let's start with the leaving. So at node A, what are the currents leaving? So there is only one. With respect to node A, this only current I3, right? Because its direction is away from node A. So we only have one current, which is I3. And then equal to the current entering. So we have two currents entering, this I1, and this I2. With respect to node A, they are entering that node. So we have I1 plus I2. Okay? So this can be considered as our third equation. Okay? So if we try to rewrite the three equations, so we now have three equations. The first one is 2I1 minus 8I2 equals 5. Second is 8I2 plus 4I3 equals 3. And the third is I3 is equal to I1 plus I2. So what we need to do is to solve these equations for I1, I2, and I3. So we can solve it algebraically using matrix or Kramer's rule or even calculator. So I will just show you how to solve I1 to I3 algebraically. So what I will do is I will substitute this value of I3 in equation 2 in terms of I1 plus I2. So we have 8I2 plus 4 times substituting this I3 equal to I1 plus I2 equals 3. So simplifying 8I2 
plus distribute the 4, we have 4i1 plus 4i2 equals 3. So, combine. So, 8i2 plus 4i2 is 12i2 plus 4 i1 equals 3. Let's say I will name it equation 4. And then I will use equation 1 and solve these two equations simultaneously, equation 4 and 1. So, I can cancel out the i1 by multiplying this equation 2 by positive 2, right? So, distributing the 2, we have 4i1 minus 16i2 equals 5 times 2 is 10 and subtracting equation 4 so i will align the current so i will copy first 4i1 plus 12i2 equals 3 so i will subtract the two equations so that i can cancel the i1 and then negative 16i2 minus positive 12i2 is negative 28i2 equals 10 minus 3 is 7. Then, divide both sides by negative 28. We have I2 is equal to negative 1 fourth. Or negative 0 0.25 amps. Okay? Now, we can solve for I1 using any of this equation. So, let's use this equation 1. So, I will substitute the value of I2 in equation 1. So, 2I1 minus 8, I2 now is negative 0 0.25 equals 5. So, 2I1, so negative 8 times negative 0 0.25 is positive 2 equals 5. So, transposing positive 2 to the right, we have 2I1 is equal to 5 minus 2 or simply 3. And then divide both sides by 2. We have I1 is equal to 3 halves or 1.5 amps. Okay, so we have I2 and I1. Lastly, we can get I3 using equation 3, right? So I3 is I1 plus I2. So I1 is 1.5 amps plus I2 is negative 0 0.25 amps. So we have I3 equal to 1.25 amps. Okay, going back to the original circuit, now that we have the values of I1, I2, and I3, let's identify whether the direction of each of the currents that we assign is correct or not. So for I1, the value that we get is positive 1.5 amps. So when the value of current is positive, it means that the direction of current that we assume is correct. So therefore, the magnitude of I1 is 1.5 amps and its direction going to the right is correct. Okay? While for I2, we get a negative 0 0.25 amps. So it's negative. Therefore, the assumed current that we write is opposite. So instead of this direction of arrow going upward, it should be the opposite, which is it must go downward right but the magnitude will still be the same as 0 0.25 amps and since the direction of current is reversed the polarity now of the voltage trap v2 should also be reversed so instead of plus minus it should be plus minus okay lastly for i3 we have 1.25 amps, a positive value. So therefore, I3 is equal to 1.25 amps. And the assumed direction of current going to the right is correct. Okay? Now, to solve for the voltage drops, V1, V2, and V3, we just need to apply Ohm's law. Since we already have the currents, I1 to I3, and the resistance, R1 to R3. So here are the computations for voltage V1, V2, and V3. So V1 is 3 volts. V2 is 2 volts and V3 is 5 volts. Okay, so I think that's it for this video, Kirchhoff's Voltage and Current Law Part 2. So I hope you learned something from this video and thank you for watching.